All right, this episode you're going to meet Nick and Viv. So Nick is going to talk through mechanical integration and some of the subsystems that have to change on this vehicle associated with the mods that we're undertaking. And then you're going to have Viv take you through the wonderful world of battery management system development. We've got these high, high performance, high energy, high power density batteries that just sit on the shelf. Repurpose one for the 3D scanner so I'm not dragging cables around. I'm Nick. Um, I'm in my fourth year of mechanical engineering. I've got just my thesis left. Been working here for over two years as a long term intern, specialising in mechanical design. I have a bit of a history in panel beating, so the fabrication side of things often falls to me. So that probably brings quite nicely to some of the stuff on the Land Cruiser that's been slowly being built. And so we've got the tray off, so I just finished scanning that with the wonderful scanning rig and laser scanning to create a you know 3D image of the of the object in a CAD software that we can use to model from. So there's like definite data points to design the components we're adding to it. That, that includes you know, the battery, the motor, everything that goes underneath this. You can see the motor mocked up, 3D printed a version of that. So there's a lot of backache having a printed version. With a hybrid vehicle, anything that runs off the motor when it's in electric mode, won't be spinning. So there's a few components that needed to be uh, run off 12 volt. So we've put in a third party vacuum pump to replace the stock one in there, as well as the steering pump here, which has been blanked off in the front of the motor. So that's a 12 volt pump and reservoir. And then just trying to determine where we're gonna put the air conditioning pump in such a tight engine bay. But it's getting there. I'm most stoked about this project working on a, a vehicle. You know, I come from an automotive background and the opportunity to work on a brand new car is pretty exciting. But on top of that, the excitement of uh, adding an, an additional thousand Newton meters or something to the driveline makes a very capable vehicle and it's gonna be very exciting to see how it turns out and um, the performance of it especially. Wild project um, and the opportunity to work on something like this especially in such a small town is, uh, is amazing. There's a lot to do, a lot of work in a small amount of time. Um, there's an exceptionally capable team behind it which uh, you know fills me with confidence. The scale of a project like this though is, is um, it's hard to get your head around as it hasn't been I've never seen, seen this done before, but um, the planning stages are serious. <laughs> I'm Viv, I'm one of the engineers here at Switch. I am working on the battery management system, which is responsible for protecting the battery and controlling the charge and discharge of it and its overall safety, making sure that no one gets hurt. And so at the moment I am designing the master PCB that will um, be communicating to a series of these little analog front ends or battery monitors. So the battery is made up of 16 individual modules. Each module has one of these, which monitors the cells, and then they all speak to each other and talk to the master board. And at the moment, I am in the depths of doing the layout for that. So you can see here is a rough 
Overview, slowly placing all the components. So we start off at a schematic level, high level functional blocks. As we dive in to each of the individual blocks, you get a bit more detail. So this is the CAN interface. We have our contactor drivers, which are a series of integrated circuits and some MOSFETs. And then we have our power supply. There's also things like ethernet, and isolated communications, which talks to all of this, all of the little analog front ends. We are very early in the prototype stage and hoping to get um, prototype boards for the master PCB within a few weeks. And then we can start testing everything and seeing how it goes. In the end, everything will probably have a very different form factor and be a lot more suited to the battery's design. And so this will probably look very, very different when it gets to the, the actual implementation of it. Yeah. All right, so it's a bit hard at this moment, but because all of this is in the electronics sort of world. But um, so these little boards will sit on this little module somewhere, probably on top. It'll then connect down to the two side plates and um, we'll monitor the cell voltages from all of there. <laughs> What's in here, Viv? We've got our um, test PCBs for the laser welder. They're um, designed to let us verify whether the laser welder will be able to successfully join the cell tabs. <laughs> the whole concept is that we can use these PCBs in lots of different ways to test solderability and wire traces and laser welding, given what we think will be the copper thickness. All right, there we go. Very basic. Sweet. So we've got a little uh, grounding clamp at the end for the laser welder to hold onto while we test this, because the people who are demonstrating it to us won't allow full control, but we are set up, put some tabs through here, fold them over and see how she goes. In terms of where this actually goes, there's gonna be two banks of 16 of these, so 32 in total, and they're gonna sit in the truck somewhere underneath the tray. And so inside of the battery is gonna be all the things like fuses, contactors, isolation monitoring, and a DC-DC to help buffer the 12 volt battery. It's probably gonna take up most of this sort of section underneath the tray. Probably the biggest challenge is trying to deal with an automotive 12 volt battery being the main constant power supply for the battery management system. The voltage of a 12 volt battery varies wildly while the car is on. And so you get negative voltages, you get positive voltages, you get huge swings and huge drops. And the battery management system has to be designed so it can handle all of that and maintain constant power and keep everything running well. Because if when you cranked the car and the voltage dropped really low, if that caused the high voltage contactors to open and close because they lost power for a bit or the voltage fell out of range, that would be a disaster. And it's you know, not something that you can allow. So trying to deal with that has been the biggest issue. It's very rewarding work and it is a great opportunity to like challenge yourself, try to go a little bit further. <laughs> Exciting to work on something that is tangible and right in front of you. You get to see an end result within such a short time frame, and that you get to move fast and you know, we'll be getting to drive this thing around by the end of the year. If you find this interesting and you want to follow this journey, then please like and subscribe. There will be plenty more.